For what's felt like the last 400 years, if you wanted to turn a little office PC like this into a gaming system and you had a bit of money to throw around, your best bet has been a low profile GTX 1650. But after long last, there seems to be a new contender to the throne of little Bibber office PC gaming graphics card kings, this, the RX 6400. But before we see who bows to who, it's time for a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound. If you've watched even a single one of my videos, you've heard a lot of their music, from hits like, to, Ooh, I really like this one. How about some sound effects? Epidemic Sound offers a huge library of high quality royalty free music and sound effects with a library that's growing by the week. And you never have to worry about copyright claims. I've teamed up with Epidemic Sound to bring you an awesome deal. Sign up to the annual personal plan using my code DAVID50 to get 50% off. Use the link in my description below and enter the code at checkout. Thank you Epidemic Sound for sponsoring today's video. Oh, it comes in such a cute little box. Just a little sheet letting us know that we uh, don't get a driver disc with it. Which I feel like is quite evident by the fact that there isn't a CD in the box. And a low profile bracket, which is what we're most interested in today. I'm actually really excited to check out a new low profile graphics card. It's been ages since there's been a new one some very emo bubble wrap. Now you can see we've got an XFX Speeder Swift RX 6400. I'm really curious to see how this compares to a GTX 1650 because we've actually got the same amount of video memory on here and there is actually also a GDDR6 version of the 1650. Ooh, there we go. Now, as you can see, we get a nice powder coated black shroud with a tiny little fan under there. And also not a whole lot of heat sink, but there does seem to be a little heat pipe under there, which is, which is cool. And then on the back of the graphics card, we have really basic video outs. We've just got HDMI and a display port, but it does make sense that we didn't get any more than that because well, it's, it's a little low profile graphics card. Now, one particularly stupid design quirk of this XFX card is that they've hidden one of the screws that you need to undo in order to swap the rear bracket out for a low profile one underneath the cooler shroud, which means in order to swap that rear bracket out, you either need to remove the entire GPU cooler or undo eight screws to get the shroud off in order to undo that screw, which means this entire process takes about three years longer than it could have. Okay, well, let's have a look at the insides of this little Goliath. Oh, a warranty void if removed sticker, XFX, that's real naughty. Oops. Oh, there we go. Not sure why, but that tiny little die does make me feel a bit better about myself for some reason. Wow, that's quite a fat single little heat pipe in there. It's, it's quite a cute cooler undercarriage we have here. Uh, they do actually also have a copper contact plate for the GPU. And then under here is our baby RDNA 2 die. Now the specs for that look like this compared to the specs of the GTX 1650, which look like this. Okay, so let's throw a GTX 1650 onto the test bed to get just a baseline reading, and then we'll see how this 6400 runs. <laughs> Now the brighter of you have probably noticed that this is not a low profile GTX 1650, but this is the best option I have available for this video. It is a GDDR6 one and we're just gonna have to ghetto rig it into that little bit of PC. So with that, let's see how it runs. That seems perfectly fine. Oh, this is immediately not going very well for the little system. <laughs> We've just shot almost immediately to 100% CPU utilization and uh, less than 40% on the GPU. So clearly, even if we threw an RX 6900 XT in the system, we wouldn't be getting more than about 40 frames per second in GTA 5. <laughs> Wait, 
Surely that's not right. What, what CPU is actually in here? Let's quickly see. Oh, yes. Okay, that kind of makes sense. Uh, we've got an i3-2130. I actually thought there was an i5 from this generation in here. And uh, we've only got four gigs of RAM. So no, this system is definitely not a viable use case for a GTX 1650 or the new exciting RX 6400. <laughs> Now after that slightly stupid move on my part, we're going to be using this much more powerful Lenovo SFF system, which has an i5-4560 in there, and we've got a little bit more RAM as well. So let's plug the 1650 in here and see how much better it runs in this system. It's been about 26 hours since the previous bit of video, and it has now become increasingly clear that Skeletor is living in this system, because it has corrupted three separate game drives. I don't know, maybe after the second one it was my fault, but at this point, I'm, I'm really sick of it. Every single time I plug a new, freshly re several hundred gig game downloaded games drive into this PC, even with new Windows installs on it and whatever, it just immediately corrupts the game drive. Actually, correction there, because the second time it jebated me into a false sense of security. I came in at like 9 last night to test half of the games that I downloaded to make sure that I'll be able to use them in here today. It didn't corrupt the game drive then, but when I plugged it in this morning with more 100 plus gig games downloaded, it corrupted it then! So it's, it's like deliberately screwing me around at this point. So uh, let me just go set that on fire and then I'll figure out what other configuration we can use and then we'll get back into some regular scheduled programming. Now unfortunately, after that kerfuffle, I wasn't quite out the woods yet. I then tried to use the internals of an old Dell Optiplex that had an i5-3470 in it. However, after doing a bunch of testing, that system also started vomiting up ectoplasm. So, I removed the i5-3470 from that and dropped it back into the original little Acer system and I upgraded the RAM to a 16 gig kit just to give it a better fighting chance in these tests. And this is what happened. Now it's been way too long and we've already run into a CPU bottleneck. Now it's running way better than it was before, but it seems like the i5-3470 just isn't enough CPU anymore for this tier of graphics card. Now I still compared the RX 6400 and the GTX 1650 in a couple of games in this kneecapped configuration. And despite this CPU bottleneck, for some reason the GTX 1650 still holds onto its crown with a narrow lead. So let me throw in the thickest CPU I have for this platform, the i7-3770, and see how it stacks up. a bit better, at least the CPU is not cranked at 100% anymore, and this is as far as we can go with this platform, so it's gotta be fine, right? Well, the 3770 is still struggling to keep up with the 1650 in this setup, but this is pretty much a best case scenario for an older small form factor office PC. These systems are really starting to get long in the tooth. So now that suspense has built to climax levels, it's finally time to drop the little RX 6400 in here. This offers a really usable gaming experience. And one thing that really stands out to me here is the power draw. I mean, it's like 20 watts of power draw and we're getting over 60 frames per second at 1080p high settings in GTA 5. Although, despite the fact that we're just drawing about 20 watts of power, uh, we're already in 73 degrees Celsius, so that is not super promising in terms of actual cooler performance. Wow, Battlefield 5 at 1080p medium is running very well, although, again, Battlefield 5 and AMD do have a deep, hot romance. We're getting really high frame rates here for just 40 watts of power draw. That is, that is very impressive, uh, although, again, the little cooler is quite noisy. It's, it's not a great cooler, but I think other versions of the 6400 should be good. Okay, well, Cyberpunk at 1080p low settings is not faring quite as well as the first two games, but 
this is still very playable. And uh, considering that we're getting about 50-ish frames per second with 30 watts of power draw, like, yeah, this is, this is honestly quite impressive. But yeah, anyway, we can see how the card runs now. So now let's get into the comparative benchmarks between the RX 6400 and the GTX 1650. So in these older PCIe Gen 3 office PCs, they trade blows, and considering that the RX 6400 has basically the same power draw as a GT 1030, I think that's very impressive. And considering that it is very hard to find a low-profile GTX 1650 in stock these days, the RX 6400 is pretty much your best bet. But then the final thing that I want to say is, AMD, why did you not put an H.264 encoder on this card so that you can capture gameplay with it? It drives me crazy that AMD has been doing this with their new budget graphics cards. It's 2022, just give us an H.264 encoder. But anyway, that brings me to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching, and until the next video, bye!